Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the UEFI BIOS that's available on the ASUS P9 X79 Deluxe. Uh, UEFI BIOS, uh, BIOS is kind of something, uh, sort of an anachronism now. They don't actually use uh, the term BIOS anymore. BIOS originally stood for Basic Input Output System. It's going to be replaced by the UEFI interface. It's just going to allow you direct access to the BIOS in a much more uh, user-friendly UI. As you can see here, this is the easy mode. It's very simple. It's got uh, pretty much everything that you need to know, your CPU temperature, all of that, voltage, fan speed, and you also have your EPU settings. Uh, power saving is going to give you the best benefit. It's going to have a slight under voltage to the CPU. It's not going to change the CPU itself as far as the processing power, except for within the limits of what Intel already does with speed step along those lines. Um, it's going to, again, it's going to reduce the system noise by turning fans off and also give you the best power performance uh, that, that out of the board. Uh, normal is the one where you kind of have a general, it's going to be the best overall, it's pretty much your static or your normal settings. Um, the ASUS Optimal is also uh, called the T-Probe mode, which is going to give you uh, basic overclock probably about out to 4.3 gigahertz. It's not going to change any voltage IDs or anything like that. It's just going to give you a, a basic overclock to give you the most performance out of this system. You're going to lose a little bit of, the, of that energy savings that you get from some of the other ones. And of course your fans are going to turn on because they're going to need to uh, work a little harder to make sure everything is cool. Now down below here you also have your different boot priorities that you can click directly from and get straight into the system. Boot straight to the hard drive, boot to the DVD. Then you also have some shortcut menus. Uh, if you hit the F3 key, you can go directly to any one of these straight from the easy mode. So if you want to go to your power controls to change those very quickly, you boot up into easy mode and you can get straight into it. Same thing with CPU performance, configuration, pretty much any of them. Uh, ASUS overclock profiles, you can hit them straight from here just by hitting the F3 key. The F8 button gives you your boot up menu. You can actually choose which one you want to go to straight from inside the BIOS, which is kind of nice. Um, you have your different languages over here which is also nice. You can choose them directly from here. It's pretty easy. It's very clean. The other thing you might notice is that the mouse movements are very fluid. Uh, this is not always the case with some of the other BIOSes as there's a bit of a lag when you try and transition these mouse and keyboard inputs directly into the system. Now if you do want to have a little bit of that extra control and, and get really deep into the, to tuning your system, you can just click over to advanced mode. That's going to be very f familiar territory. It's going to look a lot like the BIOS that you're used to back when it was Award and uh, Phoenix and also AMI. Uh, you're going to have some of the same information in your main screen. Your AI tweaker is going to be very similar to what you would get in those in a typical ASUS BIOS, including all of your different settings. Now ASUS has gone so far as to allow you dr uh, the same direct input, so you're not going to have to deal with uh, you know hitting a menu and trying to scroll through everything. It's just going to give you the best features and the best options here. The same thing with your uh, uh, your turbo ratio, all of that. Moving down, you go through your OC tuner, which OC tuner is just going to give you a quick overclock, very similar to what you get from the fast mode uh, if you're using the AI Suite 2. Uh, you have your DRAM timing control here. Now these numbers here are actually limited by the memory that we're using. This is not saying what ASUS is picked out. Um, it's just based on the XMP profile that's in the memory and it's going to limit that inside there based for safety's sake. These were set when we ran our extreme overclocking, which again got us to about 4.3 gigahertz. And these were set there to get us the best performance at the memory speed that was picked, which was 13, 20, uh, 1325 megahertz. Going back into the rest of the BIOS here, you can see we have our DigiPlus power control. Here we have some settings that we've set up for our static overclock, which got us out to 4.7 gigahertz. That was, uh, that's actually a record for the CPU that we have. Our previous best overclock was actually just a little bit over 4.5 gigahertz. These you have your CPU current capability, your VC CSA load line, your current capability for that, CPU voltage frequency which you can change, move around, CPU spe spread spectrum. Pretty much all of the same ones that you would normally see in, in your older BIOSes. They're just a little bit cleaner here. Uh, again, you have your options here, turbo mode parameters, uh, is turbo mode enabled, disabled, all of that. It's just going to pop up. You have your, all of your voltage settings are here, very easy to see. <clears throat> Color profiles are nice in that they're not overbearing, they don't change so much that they're difficult to read. With the exception of the warning colors, the yellow here is a little bit hard to read at first glance, especially if you're staring straight at it. Like right now, it's, it's kind of difficult to pick out what we've got here. And then you move down all the way into your uh, data and your control voltages for your different channels for memory. Uh, again, CPU spread spectrum and PCIe spread spectrum. 
those are kind of nice if you're running at stock frequencies, but once you start to overclock, the fact that they're spreading the spectrum out in order to prevent crosstalk sort of negates some of the benefits of overclocking and you end up with uh, a little bit of stability issues. Moving on through the advanced BIOS, you can see that we have you know the CPU configuration, the system uh, agent, all of the same ones that you would again see in a normal BIOS, but it's just going to be a little bit easier for you to move around. Now again, I want to kind of point out here again just how quickly we're moving through these menus. Working with some of the other UEFI BIOSes that are out there, there is a considerable amount of lag that can make it difficult to maneuver. Whereas here, moving through the scroll, clicking on any of the options, it's very quick and responsive, which is something nice that ASUS has definitely worked on and they've tried very hard to bring to the table. They've done a very good job of that. Here we can see in our monitor, we have our CPU temperature, motherboard temperature again, pretty much the same things that you would see. All of our QFAN options here are disabled because we are using Main Gear's Epic 180 cooling system and they recommend that you turn those off so you're getting the maximum benefit from the pump as well as the fan. The fan actually has a, a fan controller on it that either goes low or high and each one of these can actually disrupt that and create problems if you're running the pump off of one of these. But you do have the same uh, uh, setup that you have. For example, if you're looking at your different profiles, you have standard, silent, turbo, and my favorite, which is manual. It'll let you set your upper temperature where the fan kicks on to 100%, your lower temperature where it's going to kick down in its low duty cycle. But again, if we're pushing a pump at only 20% power, that can cause damage to the pump and, of course, you know, in the end, cause damage to our CPU. So we'll go ahead and kick that back off. All right, moving down here, you can see what our voltages are. And, of course, you have your anti-surge support. So this will uh, give you your under voltage protection or your over voltage protection for the power regulation, which is a very nice feature. All right, coming back a little bit, and we're going to talk a little bit about the DigiPlus power control. Now, we went over some of these, but it's important to understand that what we have here as far as these controls, these are where you're really going to get the benefit of an ASUS motherboard. Each one of these is going to be designed to let you find the best performance envelope for the power regulation on the board. That's going to provide you the most stable and cleanest power to your CPU and the other components on the board to make sure you have a stable overclock at whatever speed you're trying to hit. Now your limitations are again going to be your CPU and your memory and a video card if you're actually overclocking that. There's nothing that ASUS can do about a CPU that's incapable of overclocking to a certain speed. Uh, obviously we have yet to hit 5 GHz on our 3960 this board is not going to help us get there, it's going to help us get closer than we have before, again 4.7 versus 4.5, but it's not a guarantee of any kind of overclock. We still, looking back through the this system here, you have a lot of functionality and a lot of features. You have your different modes, you can actually set where it, when it boots up, what mode it goes into, do you want it to go to easy mode or directly into advanced mode. Uh, you have your tools, these are going to be very similar to the tools that you're used to again and ASUS's bio, uh, older BIOSes. So you have your Easy Flash 2, which is going to pop up. It's going to look at whatever USB device is attached and it's going to look for a BIOS that it can flash and drop in here. And one of the nice things is, is that it's actually looking at the DVD-ROM. It's looking at the USB 3.0 drive we have. It's looking at all of the things we have here, including that, that drive that's attaching all of the folders in there. So that's a nice feature that lets you flash without needing to have a bunch of, you know, boot into a floppy, boot off of a USB. You can actually do it directly from the BIOS and it makes it much simpler. And ASUS actually has an additional feature which we'll talk about a little later which is the, uh, the USB BIOS flash. Again here, you can see your drive expert which is another nice feature, kind of an instant RAID function. It's, uh, it's got benefits but uh, it's not one that we have ever used extensively. It's pretty much just, you know, kind of a, if you want to get a quick RAID set up without having to do anything or build drivers or build a RAID array, you can do it straight here from the, bi straight from the BIOS here, and it gets you in quickly. Well, that about covers what we've got here for the uh, ASUS UEFI BIOS utility in our advanced mode here. So we're going to go ahead and run some performance numbers on the overclock that we have, which once again is 4.7 gigahertz, and we'll see how it handles it.